Hello everyone, you're watching the Black Belt Tourist. Now as you may know, I have many hobbies here in Japan, and one of them is aquariums. Now what we're looking at is the most recent aquarium I've been able to set up at my school. If you don't know, I'm an English teacher here in Japan, and this is the second aquarium I've been able to install at one of my schools. So what's the focus of today's video? Well, it's about this aquarium, but it's also about aquariums in schools in general. I've heard some people say you can't have a nice aquarium at a school. There are a few problems. For example, lots of people trying to feed the fish, and not that many people trying to change the water. Now, I have seen some beautiful aquariums at schools, but they tend to be maintained by a professional company. Comes by with a truck, lots of equipment, and changes out the water once or twice a week. It costs the schools a lot of money. But I thought I could do better. I really didn't want to be responsible for putting an aquarium in the school and having everyone walk by it and say, oh, those poor fish. Let's talk about the critters in this tank. You can obviously see the fish. Those are Japanese rice fish, otherwise known as medaka here in Japan. They're very common here and come in all sorts of colors. I wanted to create something kind of natural that you could find here in Japan, so Japanese rice fish was definitely the way to go. They're also very tough. You'll also see lots of tanishi snails. I got one at the pet store and ended up with all of these snails. This school is located in a very rural area of Japan, so the teachers at the school were kind of laughing at me for paying for a snail at a pet store because they said you could catch one of these at any pond around there very easily. But I only paid for one and ended up with all of those snails. I mean, literally within one week, I'd say I could see babies in there. As far as creatures go, you may also spot a Mexican dwarf crayfish in there. Maybe not right now, but you'll see him crawl around later. Now I chose the dwarf crayfish because this is a very small aquarium, and I wanted a crustacean or something besides fish and snails in there, just to give a wide variety of creatures for the kids to look at. And also I think if you were in a pond somewhere in Japan, you might see these three animals. It wouldn't be a Mexican dwarf crayfish, it'd be a, a Japanese crayfish. But you can see all of these coexisting in nature. As far as plants goes, I've got some java moss and some anacris. And I find that they grow really fast in this aquarium. And it really surprised me how quickly they can grow in here. I'm not sure if it's just the lights or excess nutrients because the aquarium gets fed too much. Now here we're looking at the box the aquarium came in. You can see it's called the Raku Terrier. It's by Jex. Now Jex makes lots of aquarium products here in Japan. I'm not sure if they're available outside of Japan. But when I saw this aquarium at the store, there was a cool little video next to it showing how easy the water changes were. And it really, really attracted me. I had already convinced the principal of the school to let me put an aquarium in, told him I would take care of it. And I was just looking around for an aquarium that would be good for the school. I wanted something with glass so it wouldn't get scratched easily. And when I saw this water change system, I thought, that's perfect for a school because potentially it may not always be me changing the water it may be one of the other teachers and I didn't want to have an aquarium where somebody else would be resenting me for having installed it and them always having to change the water now you can see it comes with built-in lights it's got a built-in lid um, I glued in some driftwood in the corner there at first the driftwood kept floating up and after waiting for a few months I lost patience and cut a couple of flat spots onto the driftwood and was able to silicone it into the corner and 
came out pretty nice, I think. It's also got some Java moss glued onto the driftwood. Now before I start a water change, I like to use this little turkey baster looking thing to kind of blow up some of the poop that's stuck on the bottom of the aquarium. I think this syringe is originally designed to suck up lots of poop, but I find it works very well for blowing it around. Here you can also see the crayfish, he's down there on the right. Now getting this poop up into the, the flow helps the filter suck it up. Now here I am about to start the actual water change. Now one of the things I really like about this is that I don't have to open the lid of the aquarium to change any water. I don't need a siphon. The pump itself is getting the water out. That's also why I'm still blowing around some of the sediment at the bottom of the aquarium while I'm taking water out, hoping to take out the actual dirty water. Being that this aquarium is out of school, it's kind of an issue uh, having to open the lid of the aquarium to put a siphon in. A child could reach their hand into the aquarium and potentially ruin the aquascape or grab one of the fish. And I like having the lid closed, keeps things really controlled. I can't be near the aquarium 100% of the time while I'm doing a water change. And being that this is at a school, and this is the entrance of the school, it's not a classroom, but a child could run up at any moment and uh, see what I'm doing. So having that lid closed is really nice. You can see that the jug of water I have there fills up pretty quickly. Um, I believe the advertisement for this aquarium shows uh, using like a plastic used water bottle. And you, know, you can use anything. If I'd had more hindsight, I would have used a bigger stand for this aquarium so that I could set the jug there without having to hold it up. So I'm just taking this water over to the sink to dump it out, and I'll come back and I'll take some more water out. I guess I do a relatively large water change in this aquarium every time I do it. Being that the aquarium is only 10 liters, it's not difficult to change a lot of the water, and I think it can only help the fish inside. finishing up the last part of the water change and you'll see that I actually have a piece of white electric tape holding the lid down on this aquarium. That's enough to keep the kids from lifting it up and I'm opening the aquarium now just to service the filter. You can see it's got some built-in LED lights and I've added some reflective tape to the lid in order to try to get some of those light waves to bounce back down. Now I've got some filter floss I add there at the last part of the filter and this filter is actually hot rotted inspired by a video by Aquarium Co-op. If you're watching Corey, uh, thanks for the inspiration. Um, it came with these little filter cartridges that had some carbon in them but they're expensive and you can fit a lot more sponge media in there than they want you to use. There's also space inside for another, for a heater or something like that, which I wanted to do initially, but the principal of the school didn't like the idea of uh, using up any more electricity. So on top of the pump in there, there is some more sponge media just to serve as biological filtration. I actually had the idea of adding some more waterproof LED strips inside of the lid to really make a nice bright aquarium and get some plants growing in there. But like I said, the principal really wasn't keen on using any more electricity. I guess the every penny counts, or yeni if you're here in Japan. You know, I'm adjusting the little cubes. Uh, I like to leave them in there. They're sold for cherry shrimp, I believe. I just like the way they look, and it's out of school, so it kind of looks like there's a child in there playing with some blocks, and every time I do a water change, I put them back in a different way, so it kind of looks like somebody's left their toys out. Now here I'm pouring the water in through the, the feeding hole in the lid 
So if I was just changing water and I wasn't servicing the filter, I could do this whole thing without uh, lifting the lid at all. Now, if you're interested in having this system, but you don't want a small 10 liter aquarium, I believe Jex sells a similar filter that can drop into any existing aquarium and has this little pop-out spout to help you with water changes. This might be a good time to mention Daiso. If you don't know what Daiso is, it's a chain of 100 yen stores here in Japan, and they sell lots of things. I got this water jug there. I also get the filter floss, that syringe uh, or turkey baster looking thing I was using earlier came from Daiso. I even get fish food, dechlorinator, crayfish food at Daiso. Now it's not a pet store, but that's just their pet section. If you want to learn more about Daiso, stay tuned. There may be a Daiso tour coming up soon. If you're interested in purchasing this aquarium or the filter I mentioned earlier, check down below in the description for an affiliate link. It'll support the channel and I'd really appreciate it if you purchase through there. It won't cost you anything extra. It'll give a little bit of a tip of the hat to the black belt tourist. If you're in the States, you may have to use a proxy to get it shipped to you. Um, if you're in Japan, it should be no problem. This aquarium was shipped by mail to the school. Look into it. The filter may be really easy to get shipped to America. Back to the question at hand about having a nice aquarium at a school. Whenever you Google uh, aquarium in schools, you'll find that lots of people believe there's educational value in teaching children about fish and other ecosystems. So there seems to be plenty of reasons to want an aquarium in a school, besides the fact that it's a nice thing to look at when you're in a room. Some people even say that they help children with special needs focus in class. So I suppose the real question is, is it worth all the trouble of maintaining the aquarium to get those benefits? I think with a system like this, it can be. You can see the little crayfish down there. He looks happy with the water change, crawling all over the place. And the fish look happy too. That's it, everyone. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, remember to click the like button, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate any feedback. I think I'm maintaining this aquarium pretty well at the school, all things considered. Can you have a nice aquarium out of school? Maybe yes. You've been watching The Black Belt Tourist, and remember, don't be afraid to be a tourist.